Thank you. <laughs> and we ended up with something that resembled our, you know, IT as a service. And, and it was really good because, you know, not only was the migration seemingly painless, a lot of people just didn't know we did it. I mean, other than the smart people that look at their map drive and go, what's that? Uh, you know, they didn't know. We, we did it left on a Friday. We were able to do some sync compatibility. And after hearing this morning, I'm really upset because we didn't have Snowball. That would have been nice about two years ago. Uh, it was, that, was, that was some struggles. We did learn some things on that. Uh, you don't want to flood it over the wire. And, uh, and again, we had a good sync, uh, sync compatibility on doing that. We also had some good uh, uh, instruction going out to, uh, to our end staff. And then we, we, we struggled where we were going to do, how we were going to struggle, uh, source this. And so we really said, look, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right. Uh, plugged in some managed services on top of that to make sure that not only could we do the handoffs and the heavy lifting up front, but let's make sure we're using this forward. And then, of course, we want to make sure we can continue to expand the capabilities uh, as we go forward, which would be my third thing looking back. Keep the thing going. So we did a lot of rollout on the appliance. We, we lost a little steam, and now we're looking at the mobile client access and some extended mobile access. And so I would say that, you know, for that functionality, you want to keep that roadmap going and don't lose your, uh, don't lose your momentum. But uh, looking at that, we actually ended up some, some extra, some things we didn't think about. You know, we obviously have ubiquitous access now, whether it's through your mobile, cloud, uh, mobile client, through your browser. Uh, if you're at the office and your map drive is there, that's great. You're expecting that. But when you're at home, it's there. You don't have to run a VPN client. Uh, it'll run through your browser, through your mobile client. And we also had some good use cases where we wanted people to be able to use their, uh, those devices with the fruit on the back of it. Uh, they wanted to run that and be able to still access their map drives. And that's always a challenge because there's nothing there. And so for them to get that remotely, that was nice because there's a lot of, there are a lot of execs that are just married to those iPads and they just won't give them up. And so it was nice for them to have that access to things they didn't in the past and, of course, use that, use that data. Uh, but some of the additional benefits, you know, we ended up with an extra buy, backup client functionality. So we had some boxes that were, you know, uh, spaced out on our uh, legacy backup clients. And so we move forward with moving some of those things off to that. And also, long term, we'll be looking at backing up our desktops as well to this, as a, as a, again, as a self-service. And, of course, some of the big things that really stood out was the resiliency, uh, a lot of disaster recovery and business continuity functionality that we just didn't anticipate. And so we're, we're, again, quite pleased after that cook-off. So one of the things, again, that I was poking on um, was, you know, how are we going to get some ROI on this? Because we were looking at this as a cost savings out of the, our storage hemorrhaging that we were doing. And so uh, we really could have made this in a year one ROI. But the tagline was is just with, a, with about 750K up front, where, what our target was, I turned off about $1.3 million a year in file server spend. And so... You know, it took us a little while to get some of that tail end off, which would be the last lesson learned is before you start all that, figure out where you're going to put DHCP, DNS, and print, because you need to think about that as you turn off your utility servers. Uh, but it was real quick ROI. It was a no-brainer early on when we were looking at the pricing. And, and one of the things we really liked about the appliance was, you know, from a cost perspective or from a functionality perspective or a performance perspective, it actually gives you a lot of flexibility, whether you want to just put some low RPM, 7,500 RPM type storage in there, or you want to go all the way to solid state. So again, depending on what you're looking at for availability or storage, you had a lot of flexibility in that. And of course, we were just really pleased. Uh, even our CFO was pleased on some of, the, uh, some of the ROI we had. And we did actually a post-implementation comparison, and we were looking at some storage uh, block for block, 74% savings on what we, were, what we were paying to where we were going. And of course, we made a lot of people happy because they were no longer getting alerts about their S drives being full, uh, you know, whole divisions, you know, you know, putting things on their desktops because they just didn't have file server storage. And so it was a real nice, uh, real nice benefit and enabler for, for the program areas. Uh, 